Adrienne Brower, Wikipedia article audio. Adrienne Brower was a Flemish painter active in Flanders and the Dutch Republic in the first half of the 17th century. Brower was an important innovator of genre painting through his vivid depictions of peasants, soldiers, and other lower class individuals engaged in drinking, smoking, card or dice playing, fighting, music making etc. in taverns or rural settings. Brower contributed to the development of the genre of tronies, i.e. head or facial studies, which investigate varieties of expression. In his final year he produced a few landscapes of a tragic intensity. Brower's work had an important influence on the next generation of Flemish and Dutch genre painters. There are still a number of unresolved questions surrounding the early life and career of Adrienne Brouwer. The early Dutch biographer Arnold Houbraken included multiple erroneous statements and fanciful stories about Brouwer in his The Great Theatre of Dutch Painters of 1718-1719. The most glaring mistakes of Houbraken were to place Brouwer's place of birth in Harlem in the Dutch Republic and to identify Frans Hals as his master. Life Work it is now generally accepted that Brouwer was born in Udinard in Flanders in the year 1605 or 1606. His father who was also called Adrienne worked as a tapestry designer in Udinard, at the time an important centre for tapestry production in Flanders. The father died in poverty when Adrienne the Younger was only 15-16 years old. Brower had by that time already left the paternal home. Brower worked in Antwerp in 1622. By March 1625 Adrienne Brower was recorded in Amsterdam where he resided in the inn of the painter Berent van Samaren. Brower is further recorded on July 23, 1626 as a notary's witness when he signed a statement of Baron van Samaren and Adrian van Nuland about at a sale of pictures in Amsterdam. It is possible that by that time he already lived in Harlem. He was active in the Chamber of Rhetoric de Wijenger Tranken in Harlem. The motto of this amateur literary circle was, in love above all else. In 1631 Brouwer returned to his native Flanders where he was registered as a master in the Antwerp Guild of St. Luke even before he had become a porter of Antwerp. The artist continued to live and work in Antwerp until his untimely death. The artist's name regularly shows up in Antwerp records usually in connection with arrangements for his various debts. In 1633 Brouwer was jailed in the citadel of Antwerp. The reason for the imprisonment is not clear. Possibly it was for tax evasion, or, alternatively, for political reasons because the local authorities may have considered him to be a spy for the Dutch Republic. The operation of the bakery in the Antwerp citadel was in the hands of the baker Juice van Kriesbeek. It is assumed that Brouwer and Van Kriesbeek likely got to know each other during this time. Based on information provided by contemporary Flemish biographer Cornelis de B in his book Het Golden Cabinet Van Kriesbeek is believed to have become Brouwer's pupil and best friend. Their relationship was described by de B as Su Dia de Songhen, Su Pipen de Jonghen. The stylistic similarities of Van Kriesbeek's early work with that of Brouwer seem to corroborate such pupillage. On April 26, 1634 Adrienne Brouwer took up lodgings in the house of the prominent engraver Paulus Pontius as the two men had become close friends. The same year the pair joined the local chamber of rhetoric via Lieren. It has been suggested that Brouwer's painting called Fat Man or Luxuria, which possibly represents the deadly sin of lust, is at the same time a portrait of Paulus Pontius. General 
Early biographers describe how Adrienne Brower and his artist friends spent a lot of their time partying in the local taverns, often joined there by fellow artists. Brower painted a tavern scene called The Smokers, which included a self-portrait together with portraits of Jan Cossiers, Jan Levens, Juice Van Kriesbeek and Jan Davids. Tahim the company of friends is shown sitting around a table and smoking. Brower is the figure in the middle who is turned around to face the viewer. This type of group portrait doubled as a representation of one of the five senses. Despite his reported dissolute lifestyle and his preference for low-life subjects, Brower was highly respected by his colleagues as evidenced by the fact that Rubens owned 17 works by Brower at the time of his death, of which at least one had been acquired before Rubens got to know Brower personally. Rembrandt also had paintings by Brower in his collection. Genre Scenes in 1635 Brouwer took on Jan Baptist Dandoy as his only officially registered pupil. In January 1638 Adrienne Brouwer died in Antwerp. Some early biographers associated his early death with his party lifestyle and abuse of alcohol. How Breken, however, attributes his death to the plague. Evidence for the latter is that originally his remains were buried in a common grave. Only a month after his death, his body was reinterred in the Carmelite Church of Antwerp on February 1, 1638 after a solemn ceremony and at the initiative and expense and in the presence of his artist friends. Brouwer left a small body of work amounting to about 60 works. Just a few of his works are signed, while none is dated. As Brouwer was widely copied, imitated, and followed in his time, attributions of work to Brouwer are sometimes uncertain or contested. For instance, the smoker showing a man exhaling smoke while holding a bottle of liquor was attributed for a long time to Brouwer, but is now given to Brouwer's follower and, possibly, pupil Juice Van Kriesbeek. The principal subject matter of Brouwer are genre scenes with peasants, soldiers and other lower class individuals engaging in drinking, smoking, card or dice playing, fights etc. often set in taverns or rural settings. Brouwer also contributed to the development of the genre of tronies, i.e. head or facial studies which investigate varieties of expression. He produced a few landscapes in the final years of his career. Brouwer's compositions are nearly all executed in small format. Portraits and Tronies Brouwer was influenced by Dirk Hals, a genre painter who was active in Harlem. Brouwer's stylistic development cannot be traced with certainty. Pictures in bright natural colors are believed to have been painted in the 1620s. Around 1630, Brouwer's palette started showing a strong preference for browns, grays, and greens. The painter had a free, sketchy manner of painting and applied paint thinly. Landscapes in his genre scenes Brouwer depicted peasants, soldiers, and other lower-class individuals engaging in various forms of vices such as drinking, smoking, card or dice playing, brawls etc. often set in taverns or rural settings. The sole purpose of his compositions often appears to be the representation of the essence of the vice. Influence it is still contested whether he intended to convey any moral message. He gradually appears to have concentrated more on the expressions of his subjects going through the emotions of pain, anger, disgust, and joy. This is particularly clear in his many paintings of tavern brawls, such as the brawl between peasants and brawling card players. 
These compositions depict how rage in its varying stages and degrees is reflected in the facial expressions of the persons having an argument. Brower does not appear to denounce these outbreaks of anger as a Christian sin but as an expression of a lack of self-control. This view was likely based on the ethical ideas of Seneca which were rediscovered and developed into Neo-Stoicism by the Flemish philologist and humanist Justus Lipsius. These new ideas were generally accepted in Antwerp's humanist circle of which Brouwer formed part. Adrienne Brouwer is regarded as an important innovator of portrait painting, a prominent genre in Netherlandish art. Notes His most famous group portrait is set in a tavern and is referred to as the Smokers. Despite the modern title, the scene is a group portrait of fellow artists of Adrienne Brouwer who resided in Antwerp. Not all of them have been identified with certainty. Brouwer is the second figure on the left who is turned towards the viewer. He has his eyes wide open, holds a beer jug in his right hand and puffs out smoke from his pipe. The figure on the far right has been identified as Jan Davids. Dahim. The other artists have not been identified with certainty but it has been suggested that Jan Levens is the person on the far left, Juice Van Kriesbeek the person in the middle and Jan Kossiers the second person on the right. This group portrait is regarded as belonging to the type of the friendship portrait. Similar friendship portraits that include a self-portrait had been created before by Rubens in his self-portrait in a circle of friends from Mantua and by Simon de Vos in the group portrait of himself with Johann Girloff and Jan Kossiers referred to as gathering of smokers and drinkers. While the latter two friendship portraits were fairly conventional, Brouwer innovated the type in the smokers. He achieved this by expanding the portraits to full-length portraits, setting the scene in a tavern, the expressiveness of the faces and the nonchalant demeanor and clothing of the sitters. The dynamism of the composition brings the group portrait closer to Brouwer's tavern scenes than to contemporary portrait paintings. The portrait The Smokers falls also into the genre of the dissolute artist portraits that took root in Dutch and Flemish genre painting in the 17th century. The genre was an inversion of the Renaissance ideal of the pictor doctus, the artist as an intellectual and gentleman. This ideal was replaced by the new model of the prodigal artist who is characterized by his creative inspiration and talents. These portraits emphasized the artist's dissolute nature by creating associations with traditional moral themes such as the five senses, the seven deadly sins and the prodigal son in the tavern. In the smokers Bowers depicted the sense of taste. Brower played an important role in the development of the genre of the trony. The term trony typically refers to figure studies not intended to depict an identifiable person, but rather to investigate varieties of expression. As such tronies are a form of genre painting in a portrait format. Adrienne Brouwer contributed to the genre as he had a talent for expressiveness. His work gave a face to lower-class figures by infusing their images with recognizable and vividly expressed human emotions anger, joy, pain, and pleasure. His youth making a face shows a young man with a satirical and mocking gesture which humanizes him, however uninviting he may appear. Brouwer's vigorous application of paint in this composition, with his characteristically short, unmodulated brush strokes, increases the dramatic effect. Genre painters often returned to the old theme of the allegory of the five senses and created series of tronies depicting the five senses or the seven deadly sins. Brouwer also painted a number of genre portraits that represent the five senses or the seven deadly sins. An example is the painting called Fat Man or Luxuria which is believed to be a portrait of Paulus Pontius as well as a representation of the deadly sin of lust.
the artist also painted a few late landscapes in addition to his rural scenes. They are atmospheric and painted with a loose touch. Brouwer influenced a large number of Flemish and Dutch painters including Korn Eli Softleven, David Teniers the Younger, Matthias van Helmont, Hendrik Martens Zoan Sorg, Horatius Bolognier, Giacomo Francesco Sipper, Daniel Boone, and Joseph Danhauser.